What is up, fam? What is up? How is it going? I'm walking you through the vocal recording template that I have here. Well, it's technically not a vocal recording template. It is just a recording template. So it's the simplest way that you can do this. And it's the simplest form of recording. So first things first, let's talk about the session window here, is, which is what we're looking at. We're in GarageBand. So this is super easy, low barrier to entry if you have a MacBook. There's a few things that you need to know, uh, a few pieces of this screen that you need to know. First, we have the notepad over here. You can write lyrics here. I have recording steps here for you. So you can just do that. You can also pull in loops if you have any loops on your computer. Don't need to worry about that though. Uh, so I'm just going to keep this open so you can read it as we're going along. But first things first, let's talk about what we've got here. So we've got, this is the arrange section here. This is like the, where all of your audio files will go when you're recording or when you're bringing your beat track in or anything like that. Uh, this is what you call the transport controls, meaning stop, play, record, loop. And this right here is your cycle or your loop. So you can loop sections and just, it'll complete continue to loop around. So you can turn that on and off. There's also a quick command for that. I believe it's C. And then the record quick command is R. Yep. Play is space bar. Stop is also space bar or zero. And then you, I normally don't use these, but you could use them if you want to. And then here, this is telling you where you are, where your playhead, this guy right here, this is your playhead. And basically what this is going to do is, um, this is basically where you're going to set things and you can like set things to record. So this is the playhead. That's what it's called. This bar that you'll always see on your screen, right? So if I hit play, you'll watch the playhead move. So I'm going to hit space bar to play. See how it's moving and see how these, these uh, numbers are moving up. Now you can actually click into here and you can change the way you see this. Right now it's showing the beats and the project and, and all of that stuff. You can also do like that, or you can do time, which is just the time. I recommend doing beats and project that gives you the most information, the most important information. So basically, this is telling you exactly where things are now. This is gonna be really important for recording because you want your recording to line up to this grid. You don't have to be perfect to it, but whenever you're recording, it's gonna make your editing life so much easier if you record to this grid here. See how there's like lines and stuff and it's separated, see the numbers on top. These are uh, beats and bars and all of that good stuff. So you got, you're on the first bar, this is beat one. Now if I go to the third one here, that's beat three of the first bar. Not gonna go too deep into that, but I just wanna show you like, this is your playhead and this is where you can set things and you can just hit R for recording. And look, it starts to record at that point and you can see me recording. So let's just undo that, we don't need that. Okay, so to wherever you put this and wherever you set this and hit record, it'll count four bars and then record. Now, why would it count four bars and record? Because we have this one, two, three, four setup. See that? So you click that on, that gives you a one, two, three, four count and then, um, or count in. So most songs are gonna be in four, four. We're not gonna talk too much about it, but it'll give you a count in. So you'll have like a little bit of time before you have to start recording. It's usually, it's very helpful for me. I usually just keep it on all the time. And then right next to that, you have your click or your metronome. Basically, this is allowing you to stay on time. Uh, and, and that's why it's so important to set your BPM correctly. So the second point here is to make sure that you set your BPM correctly. So for example, if I went ahead and I dragged in this beat right here, see, notice how the beat doesn't have the BPM on it, it just has the name and all of that stuff. Uh, there are ways where you can search your BPM online. Um, you could put your track in there and search it. Um, lot, or GarageBand doesn't have a meter, sometimes you do, but uh, this is something you're just going to have to try to find the information and just get that information. Usually if you're buying your beat from somewhere, you'll have that information uh, somewhere in the description. Or uh, if if it's if it's a beat of mine, I put it in the in the title here. I put I usually do it. This is one of my tracks, so I didn't need to. So I know that this BPM is 120 or 155. So usually when you open up the project, it will be set to 120. That's the default. So BPM and tempo are the same thing. So let's go ahead and set the BPM to uh, 155. I know this one's 155. So you can just double click in that and then just change the number or you can click and drag it however you want. I like to do, if I know the number, I just put it in. So now if I play it, and you can hear the click is on beat. Now if I do this, Up, 
notice how the click doesn't exactly line up so it doesn't feel like it's right so that's how you know you're off if it doesn't exactly line up this is what it sounds like when it's on time Okay, so super helpful. Um, I encourage everyone who's recording with this template to record with the click on. Um, understanding that will help you, like, you know, it'll just help you in the long run as a musician and as an artist. Okay, so let's talk about the tracks that we have here as well, too. We have the beat track. Obviously, that's where you put your beat. And then we have your vocal, good, or your good takes. So basically, these good takes are like the takes that you like. And I, I have it as a separate track so that you stay organized. So what I would do is, um, as you get more involved in this, if you're going to do more vo vocal layers, there's other things that you can do. But just to keep this really simple, you have a vocal record track where you record your takes, things that uh, you want to record. Say you mess up and you want to re-record it, you can delete it on this track. And then you have a good take, and then you, you can pull that up to the good take track. And on the good take track, you don't touch it. You just kind of leave the vocals there. Those are the ones you're done with. They're good. They sound good. And then you kind of just like keep going from there. So I would record on this track. Now you're like, okay, how do I set this up for recording? Easy. I'll show you. So if you click on any of these tracks, you have a couple of things that come up. Sometimes if it doesn't come up with that bar on the bottom, you just need to go over here to the top and press that. Or you can press the B button and that will open it up. This is the smart controls. And basically what you want to do is make you make sure you're selected to the track. You want to select controls so you can see all of these things. And over here on the input, you want to make sure that this circle is one circle and not two like that. Because this is stereo, this is mono, you want to keep it so that it's uh, mono. So stereo looks like this. So one side, wherever my mic is plugged in, that's going to come in. And then the other side won't record anything because nothing's plugged into it. Um, you don't have to worry about that if you're recording vocals. Rarely will you record stereo vocals. So you just need to keep it on mono and that's totally fine. So when you do that, then on the input here, you also have this drop down menu, which has all of your inputs. So whatever interface you end up having, whether it's a Focusrite 2i2 or something bigger like mine, you'll have all the inputs show up here, right? And if you're not seeing your inputs here, go to GarageBand here at the top, preferences, go to your audio and make sure you select your input and output devices as your interface. Mine is universal audio. Yours will probably be something like Focusrite or something like that. So just make sure you select that from here. Um, okay, so that is set. And then you, right under that, you have monitoring. So monitoring, like you could, this is like if you want to see it and you want to hear it coming through the effects that are set up here. So basically, if I turn off monitoring, you see that this doesn't show. It's not, you're hearing it, but like it's not coming through this. But if I turn monitoring on, now it's coming through this channel and you can kind of hear this. It probably actually sounds kind of weird at the moment because you're hearing two of me. But you don't need to leave that on. Um, it's just really, that's good for you if if you're trying to hear what it sounds like through the effects. Like for example, if you had auto-tune or something and you want to hear what it sounds like through auto-tune, I would do that. But if you're recording on GarageBand, I would leave it off because it might be, it might be hard to hear yourself. Like it might be, you'll get like a delay. Um, you could put feedback protection on, although I don't think you really need it. Uh, and then you also have a noise gate here, which is actually kind of helpful to have. I usually will put a noise gate on my tracks. So you have that here, you can turn it on, turn it off, and it'll show up here in the plugins. Now plugins are basically effects that you put on your on your voice or on the track that allow you to do a couple of different things. There's a whole bunch of cool things. We're not going to dive into it because this is just a simple template for you to be able to use uh, in your recording. So you don't need to worry about all that unless you really want to dive in deep. You can check out any other videos on my YouTube for that. So um, so yeah, basically what we would do is have our beat track and then basically we can have this set right here and then we will just record. It's already set up so we can just record. So I'm going to hit the R key and we're recording. Hey, you know what I mean? Like you can do that and then to stop recording you hit the space bar and that stops recording. And now, you, there, here's a couple of other things. See how I recorded this onto my track right here? You can take a look at this and you can do like fades or you can you can like edit them and all of this so you can loop it. All that good stuff you could do here. So what we actually, what we actually wanna do is take a listen to it. We can mute it 
and then this headphones does it this is mute and then this headphone thing is to solo so if we wanted to hear what it sound like this is what it sounds like na, 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 na. hey da, na, na, da. you know what i mean like you could do that and then to stop recording you hit the space bar Okay, so now you can kind of hear what that sounds like. Now, you, what you're hearing right now is my voice through my Apollo interface. I have like a much more professional kind of setup. So your voice may not sound exactly like this unless you have the same setup as I do. But you could still get a great recording um, through the through your like focus rate and all of that stuff. So that's to solo if you want to hear it without the beat. And then you can hear it with the beat too. You know what I mean? Like you can do that and then to stop recording you hit the space. Okay, so great. So we have that. Say we like like a section of it. We can go over here, take our playhead, drag it over to say we like from three to five. We could drag it here, hit the scissors button, and that will bring up this window for audio editing and all that stuff. But actually what I what I would do is hit command T to split it. And then you can drag it over again to the other place. And then we select this command T to split it. And then you could just drag it up, whatever you like. Try to keep it. The reason why I was saying keep it on the grid and make sure your BPM is set so that when you audio edit, like it's, it's, you never mess up your flow. You know, you're not messing up like your timing or anything like that. So now if I wanted to, I could just like mute the other things. You know what I mean? So now like that's in there and all of that good stuff. So regardless of if that sounds good, we don't, we don't need that. That's just me kind of teaching that, but there we go. So we've got all of that stuff there and you've got your beat and you're able to record. Now, basically what you can do is just kind of like go section by section in your song and record. Say you want to just like, kind of like hang out in a certain section, like at the very end here, I just have beats. You can use that cycle record thing. So you turn this on or you could just click right up here in this top bar where the numbers are at and you just click and drag and that allows you to put a, a loop. Now, if I play, it's going to loop around. Let's see. See how I looped around like that? And you can endlessly loop. It'll endlessly loop. So if you want to record the section a couple of times so you can get your flow right, you could do that here too. And as you record, like let's just do a small section so that so that you can see that. If you record on your track, it'll continue to loop. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here is another take. All right, cool. So now I recorded all four of them. You're like, hey, Kirk, where did they go? You see this little number right here? That shows you all your takes. So you can go through and you can actually pick the best one. And like, say I like take number two, and then I can just put that up there. Or what you can do, this is something I do all the time, is I will click here and delete unused takes. So which if you, if you record all these takes and you have them, it's fine to keep them. But um, just to make your session a little bit better and work easier and all that stuff, I would just make a decision, pick your favorite one, and delete all the unused takes. And now you only have that one take. Notice it tells you which take it was. And you can always just re-record it if you don't like it. Um, and that's the cool thing. you know. And, and here's another cool thing as well. This is take two, and it recorded it uh, over and over again. And if you drag it out, you could still see the other takes there. So like you don't lose it really, they're there. So it's it's cool. Um, but you just don't have them like on top of each other and all of that good stuff. So um, there you go. That's that's pretty much recording uh, basics and, and using GarageBand in this template to kind of help you out and record. Now, if you want this to be a little bit more effective for you, what you can do is click onto your vocals here, press the B button to bring up your controls, and you could play around with the plugins that you put on here. Logic has a lot of really good like plugins that you can play with, and you can just learn a little bit of mixing and it'll go a long way. Um, I already started off with a little, like a little bit of EQ that I threw on here, a little bit of compression. You don't have that much flexibility in GarageBand, but um, it, at least you'll be able to get something that sounds decent as a demo. So hopefully that helped and I am excited to hear the music you create.